the percentages of women CEOs, and anything with a C in front of it is still arguably low. And there may be a couple categories that it's, it's, it's robust, but, but not in, in anything I've read. So the fact that, so, so it's actually very good news, and, and it's, it's really edifying to learn that boards are getting more specific about the kind of skills they want and not maybe therefore as attached to the notion of someone with a C in front of their name or having run a, a, a big P&L. But to the extent that there's, up until this point, to the extent that there's just not enough women in those qualifying positions, it's just, if, if a board's criteria was you got to be one of those, it's just going to be a bad mathematical equation. So I really, uh, I really think that is probably the block. I, I, I'm certainly not aware of, but maybe there are some um, boards uh, where CEOs or uh, nominating and governance committees or lead directors um, disagree that having women would be a good thing or disagree that a certain amount of diversity um, may be helpful, but it's probably it won't be, um, that, but may, I can easily see um, executives who aren't flexible enough to consider uh, less, um, you know, traditional uh, job descriptions must be a, must be a CEO, for instance. The other thing I imagine gets to the the issue, and it hasn't come up yet tonight. I'd love to hear about it. Is tenure? How long is a good amount of time to be a board member? Um, you know, is because you could argue different things. You know that the value of a deep experience in the company, and you know, with with experience and with understanding, makes you know comes a depth of knowledge that allows you to be a better contributor. And then you could argue that fresh opinions, new uh, sets of eyes, um, are really valuable as well. And with boards aren't going to get big, you know, much bigger than they are. There's, it's just really, again, um, a little bit of a numbers game, I think. And so um, an issue, really, I think that we should discuss is, is, is longevity. What, what's the appropriate amount of time? There may very well be a lot of boards that would like to have and are open to new skill sets and, and diversity and just don't know what to do with their perfectly fine aging directors. <laughs> I, um, I agree with everything you said, and I'd add that um, I think two other factors. One is um, just take a company that was mentioned earlier this <coughs> evening that when it went public recently had no women on its board. I don't think they ever talked about it before, and then they got hammered for it right before. But I bet they never had a conversation about it. It just wasn't top of mind. and. There are lots of reasons to say, oh, we can't find people, but that's kind of hogwash. There are plenty of people in technology that would have been a good board member for that company. It just didn't come up. That said, I do think an issue on high-tech boards of privately held companies or any venture-backed business is that two-fifths on average, um, you know, or three-sevenths um, you know, or more of the seats are held by investors. Guess who are usually not women? <laughs> are the investors in these companies. And if you look at the number of women partners in venture capital firms and women partners in private equity firms and you know people who are investing, it just means there isn't necessarily as much diversity from those for those investor seats um, either. And so then you think about it, you've got two in, in you know any company situation, you've got two founder seats, let's call it, two investor seats, that's one open slot, truly, um, that you're looking to fill. And I think that starts the well, we didn't talk about it because really there was only one extra seed and I wanted this person who was in my last company to be in it. And, and I think I'd add, in Europe, there's certainly begun threshold mandates, okay? And the U.S., you know, hasn't, hasn't got there. I, I don't think there's any good reason why we don't have that. I think it's really about what we've said earlier. I think Julie talked about, you know, with, your, with daughters, with yourself, it's all advocating. I have three children, two are daughters. We raised them to believe they, and they could do anything they wanted, okay? And I think it isn't a discussion that happens enough on one of the boards that Mary and I sit on together. Uh, we decided that we wanted a minimum amount of women. We wanted skill sets, but we wanted a diverse board. And that was one of the requirements. And as we look at changing people as they retire or we need different skill sets, that's part of who we are. And, and, and there are great organizations like the ones that are sponsoring this event tonight that I think are important in advocating that. 
because there's no logical reason. Hopefully someday soon we'll have a woman president. And maybe that's what it will take to finally put this not as something that's evolving, but actually has arrived. Uh, but there's no good, there's not a logical you know, conclusion other than, you know, we're behind the times and, you know, there are enough examples of very talented women. One of the companies we invested in uh, was a footwear and apparel company called Ariad and the founder was a woman, very talented in San Francisco. Uh, when we became investors, uh, the whole board was women. The majority of senior managers were women. And both my partner and I, it was like, my God, we've never seen that. Okay. Now it turned out to be a terrific company, terrific investment for us. Uh, the, the conversations, it was a retail consumer business, so it was very appropriate because the consumer was the people who were sitting around the room and a couple of guy investors who, you know, we couldn't even relate to the product. We had a financial acumen and we were bringing the money to scale the company, but it, it worked and it, and it was very, very successful. So I, I don't think there's any good excuse left. I, I think it just has to happen sooner than later.